Hello, friends. This is Professor Gublov. Today's video will be a little unusual, but I'm sure you will like it. So, get comfortable and let's go. Whale Blasts Up to 2,000 different individuals of whales are beached each year. If conditions permit, the whale carcass is cut into pieces and buried in the sand on the beach. If the sand is shallow, the carcass may be transported to a more suitable location. But during transportation, the whale may explode. This is what happened to a sperm whale in Taiwan in 2004. A dead sperm whale washed up on the southwestern coast of Taiwan near the city of Tainan. It took 50 workers, two cranes and 13 hours of work to put the carcass on a truck. Local biologists wanted to perform an autopsy on the sperm whale. It became a big event in Tainan. In the heart of the city center, the sperm whale exploded on a narrow street, splattering houses, cars and a crowd of onlookers. As it later turned out, the sperm whale died of a fractured spine it had been hit by some kind of vessel. It was there, in the spine, that decay had begun while the animal was still alive, and eventually the explosion took place there. Such an explosion of a whale is not uncommon. Before transportation, whales and sperm whales are specially pierced to release gases and prevent an explosion, which can be powerful, the entrails burst out of the whale at a speed of up to 70 km per hour, at a distance of up to 50 meters. Watch on to find out what you should do if someone near you is choking. Poisonous snakes. There are some signs that indicate, but do not guarantee, that a snake is venomous. Pupils. Harmless snakes usually have round pupils, while venomous snakes have elongated elliptical pupils. The most famous exceptions, the venomous mamba, Africa, Cobra, Africa, Middle East, Asia, Indonesia, and Taipan, Australia, have round pupils. Sensor pits. Venomous snakes have special pits between their nostrils and eyes that help them sense warm-blooded prey. Head shape. In venomous snakes, the head is noticeably wider than the neck and its triangular shape is more pronounced. In non-poisonous snakes, the shape of the head is closer to round and the corners are smooth. Of course, there are exceptions. Tail. The scales on the tail of a venomous snake are arranged in a single row, while those of a non-venomous snake are dubbed rhombus pattern. This is usually a sign of venomousness, especially if the snake is tricolored. Coloring. Venomous snakes are more often brightly colored, and they can warn of their appearance by hissing, the sound of a rattle on the tail, rattlesnake, more aggressive behavior. But even here there are exceptions. Swimming style. Venomous snakes usually float on the surface of the water, while the body of non-venomous snakes goes underwater. Heat stroke. Many people confuse heat stroke with sunstroke, but they are not the same thing. The difference is that in the first case, the stroke occurs in contact with the sun's rays, and for heat stroke it is not necessary to be in the sun. It is enough to go out on a hot day, even overcast, in unventilated clothes. As a result, the body's thermal balance is disturbed and many functions are impaired. This condition carries the greatest danger for those who have problems with the heart or blood vessels. The worst thing about heat stroke is that the heart can stop. Newborn babies often suffer from heat stroke when their parents dress them too warmly during hot weather. The most important thing in case of heat stroke is to help a person quickly. But you cannot limit yourself to this, and after the first aid you need to see a doctor. Especially in cases where a child, a pregnant woman or an elderly person is affected. So, to help a person with overheating, you need 1. Move the victim to a place with shade, a cool room with good ventilation. 2. Place the person on their back. The legs and head should be elevated. You can put things underneath. 3. In case of vomiting, lay down so that the person does not choke. 4. Unbutton constricting clothing items. How to use a life jacket. How do you put on a vest? It is carried out in this way. It is necessary. First, fasten the vest. Tighten the side slings. Carefully check whether the slings are tightened and whether the zippers, buckles and fasteners, semi-automatic fasteners for connecting the slings and straps are fastened. Make sure that the vest does not slip if someone pulls on the shoulder slings, does not rub the chin, neck and armpits. Make sure that the water flow will not tear it off. You also need to feel whether you feel comfortable and convenient in it. What is the proper way to use a life jacket? If you are selecting a vest for a baby, put the product on the baby, fasten it, and then put your hands under the shoulders of the vest and try to shake the baby out of it. If this is not possible or if the nose and ears are covered by the vest, then you need to replace the product with a smaller one. 
Avoid auto blind spots. The blind spot of a car is that part of the vehicle's vision that remains unnoticed by the driver. The blind spot is dangerous both for the driver and other road users, because another car may be in it and the driver may not notice it when changing lanes. In order to determine where your car has this blind spot, there are two simple ways. In the first case, you can ask your assistant to go around the car. The areas where you lost sight of him will be the blind spot. You can estimate this zone while in a traffic jam. Note that in this case, your car should be standing and the neighboring rows should be driving. Observing in your mirrors, notice where the car next to you disappears. There the blind spot begins, and ends when the same car will appear from behind the side stand and you will see it with peripheral, i.e. side vision. For safety reasons, you can conduct this experiment while you are in a car parked at the curb. Another blind spot is the area directly behind the trunk of the vehicle. It is dangerous when the vehicle starts to reverse. Don't sleep with your phone. Like most people, you probably keep your smartphone close to your bed so you can reach it easily. Statistically, 71% of people do this, and 13% put their smartphone in bed at all. But is it safe to sleep in such close proximity to your device? Unfortunately, experts are divided on this issue. In November last year, the US National Toxicology Program summarized the results of a 10-year study that cost $30 million. It was devoted to the impact of radiation from smartphones on human health. Scientists exposed rats to different levels of radio radiation for different periods of time and monitored their condition. The results were quite frightening some male rats developed tumors in the heart, brain and adrenal gland after the radiation. Female specimens also developed side effects, but the researchers aren't sure if their tumors were caused specifically by the radiation. Study leader John Boucher believes that their work should not be used to draw definitive conclusions about the effects of radio frequency radiation on human health. Do not mix bleach and ammonia. It would seem, well, what danger can carry the usual household chemicals? Almost all of us daily encounter with bleach, peroxide, hair dye and many other products. But few people know that some types of household chemicals should never be mixed with each other. The fact is that mixing releases such toxic substances and compounds that can cause serious harm to health. This is why you should not mix bleach and ammonia. Bleach and ammonia are the home improvement aids that almost every housewife has. At the same time, you should not allow a situation where they could mix. When they interact, there is a formation of toxic chloramine vapors, which, in turn, can lead to the appearance of poisonous hydrazine. It is not only toxic, but also potentially explosive. What you will feel? Chloramine burns your eyes and respiratory system and may cause internal damage to respiratory organs. In such a situation, you should leave the room immediately. Heimlich's reception. The Heimlich technique should be performed only if the person is unable to breathe, speak or cough. In other cases, you should not intervene the object will either fall further down the digestive tract, or the person can cough it out himself. The technique is named in honor of the American physician Henry Heimlich, who is its author. By profession, Heimlich was a thoracic surgeon, specializing in thoracic organs, so he knew perfectly well the anatomy and physiology of the respiratory organs. This is what allowed him to develop a valid first aid technique for choking, using subdiaphragmatic thrusts. An article with a detailed description of the method was first published in 1974. The following year, the Association of American Physicians involved in the development of emergency care methods officially included the technique in the Register of Medical Standards. The reception on the other person goes like this. Stand behind the man. Wrap your arms around him just above his belly button, hands interlocked. Press down firmly on your abdomen by bending your arms sharply at the elbows. Repeat several times until the airway is clear. For pregnant women and obese people, the instruction is slightly different. Hands should be placed in the chest area, under the chest. Well, as I promised, the video was interesting. So, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.